Hello again and welcome to Tips with Andrew. I am your host, Andrew Sapiano. Thank you for joining me. Glad to have you on this beautiful Monday afternoon we are. I hope you guys had an awesome weekend. Hope you guys are rocking it out, ready to rock out the week. Uh, happy Monday. Let's get it rocking here. That's a lot of rockins. <laughs> All right, let's get rolling then. Um, today, what I wanted to talk about is actually perfect because A, it's a gloomy day out, so what better to talk about, and B, we're right after the weekend, so weekend is normally cheat day time for people as well as when it is gloomy and disgusting to be outside. So that is why today's topic is going to be on weight management. I want to talk, I want to give a couple tips that help me. Um, that I've done some research about that I use and implement on my da- in my daily routine. Um, obesity is actually one of the leading one of the leading causes of death in uh, North America. Um, one almost one in every two uh, Americans are obese or overweight. Um, so it's it's a very big concern for everybody. And now when I talk about weight management, I don't really always want to harp on big people trying to lose weight. There's little people trying to gain weight uh, also that can't, or not that they can't, but they have a a really hard time struggling with it. And so weight management affects all of us. And whether, you know, you're trying to drop a couple sizes just to fit in those pants that you like, um, or you're trying to tone it up for, you know, Christmas seasons just around the corner, or it's here actually, um, pictures are coming, family events, stuff like that. And then uh, <clears throat> comes into New Year's. <laughs> New Year's, the number one New Year's resolution is to, new, is to lose weight. So everybody is always looking to maintain their weight, whether they're looking to lose it, gain it, or just kind of uh, keep it under control. That's hopefully what I'm here for. So let's get right into it. Today I have three tips that help me, and uh, I hope they can help you too. So tip number one has to do with um, parking your car in the parking lot. So what you what normally what you do when you when you go into a parking lot and you're going to Walmart or whatever your shop is, you're trying to find the closest spot around. I know that there's multiple people that will drive around for hours on end trying to find the closest spot to the door. It's great if it works, but if you're trying to lose if you're trying to maintain your weight, a really good suggestion that I found super helpful for me was to park near the back of the parking lot. Now, you don't have to park all the way in the back, but you know, you start slow or you start small and then you work your way up. Park a few rows back. You know, don't try and find the closest spot to the to the door. Try and find it so that you got a perfect balance between you're far enough away to get a little bit of movement before you get there and you're close enough so that you're not, you know, you can still see the, uh, the store that you're trying to get to. That's a really great tip. Because not only will it force you to get a little bit of movement, a little bit of exercise, but it's also gonna, you're also going to notice that right away with your legs, um, your, uh, your rear end uh, areas, along with your calves and somewhat of your stomach, you're just going to notice that it starts to shrink a little bit. It starts to get kind of toned in its own little way. And that's not even doing, that's not even going out of your way uh, to do anything really strenuous on your body it's just parking your car a few uh like a few rows away from the from where you would normally park that way you get a little bit of movement and that's that's really all you need when you, when it comes to exercise people think that you have to go to the gym you have to you know the membership and the pump and the weights and the you know the bench press and the running and all that stuff but when you're talking about movement and exercise you really just want to move your body you want to get into the into the habit of moving you want to do something to, to, to lift your heart rate a little bit more than uh, what it normally does. That's, that, that's, how you, <laughs> that's how you get your big heart, the movie The Grinch. No, it's not. But that is how you strengthen your heart and you allow it to do more than what uh, it, it normally does on a daily basis. And, and that can only be better for you in the long term. Tip number one, park your car a little bit further away from the door and that will help you. <clears throat> that helped me tremendously. Tip number two is also having to do with a little bit more walking than you're used to on a daily basis. Um, I know that uh, a lot of people, well, especially now with the working at home, it's easy to sit down and do nothing all day or, you know, to sit down all day 
and uh, and do all of your chores and everything from a seated position. And it's not, and unless you really want to, yeah, you don't. It, it's it's easier to just sit down and not get up and move around. Also, if you're going to a desk job and you're sitting, I know that Tina, for example, she's an eyelash technician. So when she goes to work, she's sitting all day to do eyelashes. And then when she comes home, unless she's consciously uh, wanting to move around, she's just going to be sitting down at home all night. So then that's an, a whole day of sitting down. So that your body's not meant to be in a seated position for that long always, but it's also better it's also not good for your posture and your your bone alignment structure all that stuff. So what you want to do is you want to you want to uh, you want to get your a little bit more movement than you would uh, on your daily basis. So that leads me into tip number 2, which is take the stairs whenever possible. Now, for me, I'm not I live in an apartment building and we're on the ninth floor. So for me to take the stairs, that's a lot of stairs. And honestly, I've done it before. It's not fun. And if I was to tell, if I, if I had somebody telling me that that's the way I needed to lose weight, I would probably not even do it because it, it, it that I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to do that every single day, all day. You know what I mean? So that's where for me, I would suggest to me, uh, you know, get off the elevator at the eighth floor. So you start just one floor before. So you start get off at the eighth floor and then walk up the one floor. Perfect. That that's doable. That you 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 need to do what you can with what you've got. So for me, I'm in an apartment building on the ninth floor. I'm not walking up nine nine flights of stairs, but I will walk up one flight. Right? Why not? Then once you get into the habit of the one flight. Then you go to the two flights, you know, get off at the seventh floor. Then you walk up two flights and then so on and so forth, six, fifth, fourth. And then you probably won't want to do the nine floor hike all day, every day, but to do a floor or two, maybe three, maybe four, if you've got, you know, summer's coming around or pictures, whatever. But that is also, that, that is a great way to implement, again, movement, exercise, without actually having to go out of your way and do strenuous activity. And you only do it and you're implementing it into your daily routine already. So for me, I'm in an apartment building on the ninth floor. If you're in an office building on the ninth floor, you know, maybe get off at the eighth floor and try walking up. Another thing is if you're on like the second or third floor, that's perfect. Right? You, that, that way you can just walk upstairs and you don't even have to really strain yourself. You can literally get into a routine. If you're on the second floor, get a routine where you're always walking up the stairs, and that way you're getting just a little bit of movement, a little bit of exercise, and a little bit goes a long way in that aspect. So that that <clears throat> that's where uh, that that's one thing that I implemented that I do for the most part. Obviously, when you got stuff in your hands, you know, the groceries, shopping, all that stuff, you do what you can with what you got, right? So for me, that really helped me a lot. Tip number two. Uh, take the stairs whenever possible. Um, that I, I can't stress how much that will be very beneficial. Simply because, simply because, like you, you, you take the stairs sometimes, and you can see it most of the, more often than not, you're, or you can feel a little bit in your thighs, right? So that that all that's doing is just telling your body that this is something that you're doing, and your body is telling you this is not what I'm used to you doing. But I'm not, th this is my fight back. And then there, that's when you decide whether or not you want to push through that or succumb to the pressure. And then that's it. Nothing changes if nothing changes, right? Tip number three, for me more than anything, essential oils have been a lifesaver. A, oh man, a huge beneficial addition to my life. I love everything that they do for me and you can obviously use them in weight management and I will give you a couple examples. One right off the bat is lemon. I mean if you think about lemon when you're talking about doing a detox, uh, some sort of cleanse, some sort of uh, you know inside wash, everybody always talks about lemon zest, uh, put some lemons in your water, the lemon peels zest of a lemon. So what the essential oil is, is basically the zest of a lemon in a concentrated form. I love it. This is one of my favorite smelling oils. I love it. 
it's it's very interesting because when you peel a lemon, when you get the zest of a lemon, you can really tell that it's lemony and you got that little bit of a sour kick to it. This one, not so, not at all. Yeah, I, I love how uh, calm and sensitive it is. Uh, it doesn't give you that kick in the face like a, a freshly peeled lemon would. And uh, I love it. I, a, couple, a couple in my water, a couple drops in my water. Um, it's a citrus oil, so watch where you put it on your body. Um, you can do it also on your stomach. I like doing it with that, a little bit on the stomach, and then that way it, it, the oil is working uh, right, right, right where you want it, you know, right in the, in the stomach area. Uh, number two is ginger. And the second oil that I wanted to share is ginger. Uh, ginger is another great uh, cleansing, detoxifying oil. Uh, people tell you to take ginger root, um, eat it, drink it, mix it up in a, in a shake or whatever. That's what I like. I, I actually like doing that with this one. I uh, put a little drop, a couple drops in my smoothie. Um, that, that to me is, uh, that it, and, and the best part about it is it's not an overpowering oil to where if you put it in your smoothie, it's not going to, it's not going to overpower the flavor and just make it completely gross. For me personally, I don't really like the smell of ginger, the, the, the root, the plant. This one, however, is very, uh, in, it's very intoxicating. Um, I like it. I like it because it's very calm and it's very soothing. It doesn't give you that, that ginger, uh, sort of smell or taste or even after effect that the ginger root would give you. And that's another one. You put it uh, internally, topically, uh, a couple drops under the tongue uh -huh. is the quickest way into your digestive tract. So if you want to, uh, if you want to bypass all of your digestive uh, uh, organs and just get it right into your digestive tract, that's a great way to put it. Uh, I love those two oils. And actually, one of my favorite oils more than any is grapefruit. And grapefruit is awesome for. Um, I, I, it's another citrus oil, so it's cleansing, detoxifying, it's uplifting, invigorating. Um, I've heard a lot of people uh, talk about that they can't have the grapefruit peel. Um, and the grapefruit, the great, the great thing about the grapefruit <laughs> is that it is not like the peel at all. And you can take this um, internally, topically, smell it. I love the smell of it. To me, again, this is another one of those oils where I don't actually like the smell of grapefruit. I don't like the taste of grapefruit, really. But this oil, I will have it on me all the time. I love it. If I could take a bath in it, I would. Again, put a couple drops in your smoothie. This one's good if you want to put a drop in your water. Um, you can take that. I like to actually put a drop on my mask for that one. That one's awesome. Because it's uh, it's an uplifting and invigorating citrus oil that also gives you that cleansing, detoxifying uh, effect that you're looking for. Lemon, ginger, uh, grapefruit; those are my three favorite oils for uh, managing my weight. Again, any sort of citrus oil will do. Uh, if you want to get into um, some oils like cinnamon, uh, clove; those oils will help with your digestive issues. Uh, they they work with your uh, internal organs to help with the ju it just uh, more beneficial oils. So that's uh, that that's it. That's all I got for you for today. Three tips for helping maintain your weight. Tip number one: park your car a little bit further uh, back in the parking lot when you're going to the store. That'll give you a little bit more of an excuse to get a little bit of movement and that'll be very beneficial. Number two is take the stairs whenever possible. Um, do something as little as getting off one floor before your, um, your destination and then just walk up. Uh, you know, if you, if you aren't an apartment building or a, uh, an office building, instead of the escalator at the mall, maybe take the stairs, you know, just do, do what you can with what you've got. And that's not even, I, it's not hard and it's easy to get into a routine that you want to follow. It is easy. And then number three is essential oils. Essential oils have helped me more than anything. And I love them. I will, do, I, I will stand by them forever. And I don't, envision a time where I'm not going to take these. Uh, lemon, grapefruit, and ginger are three of my favorites when it comes to cleansing and detoxifying. 
That's all I got for you for today. Thank you so much for joining me. You guys are awesome. I love you guys. Um, if you'd like to learn more about essential oils, feel free to drop me a comment, send me a message. Um, feel free to share this video if you found some value in it. I hope you did. I very much hope you did. Uh, share it with your friends or your family, perhaps a teammate that you feel needs to hear this. And I look forward to talking to you guys again. You guys have a wonderful Monday evening, and I'll talk to you later. Bye for now.